I think the question is what that really fascinates me is like how on earth does an insect know when and how to travel and take such a risky and arduous journey that they take. Um, so, I, so my principal area of research is the gene genetic basis of traits in insects and so I was working on resistance but then the project came up where um, to look at the genetic basis of migration in insect pests. So migration is a fundamental life history for insects. It allows them to cope with uh, deteriorating local conditions by traveling hundreds, sometimes thousands of kilometers um, to reach their final destination. But we don't really know how they take such a risky and arduous journey. You know, we don't know the genes or the biochemical processes that allow them to take such a um, this sort of drive this fascinating behaviour. So that's really what led me to um, wanting to work on this area of science. It's such an open area of science right now. And uh, an interesting aspect about the behaviour of this particular pest that I work with, the cotton bollworm moth Helicoverpera major, it's what's called a facultative migrant. But what it does is it selects favourable winds. So it chooses the, the best winds out in the field in order to maximise the distance that it can travel. But they're far from passive flyers, you know, they need to, they, act, they, they, they actively seek out those winds. So they, they still need to be very, very strong flyers. And what we've shown on the flight mills is that some of these are indeed very, very strong flyers. Others don't fly, don't fly so far. The question we're asking is what genes are expressed in insects that show differences in their flight behaviour? So which genes are switched on or switched off um, associated with their flight ability? And so what we've been doing is we fly our insects on our tethered flight mill system and we get insects which fly quite far. I mean, insects, some insects on our tethered flight mills can fly up to 40 kilometres just over a single night. So we're working with a moth pest, so moths obviously fly at night. So we, we, we fly these during the course of a single evening. And so what we're doing is comparing insects which fly considerable distances versus those which are more like just flitters, you know. They, they only fly a couple of hundred metres on our tethered flight mills. So what we've been doing is doing an RNA-seq experiment with field populations to compare those which fly far versus those which don't fly so far. And then we've been able to associate genes that are expressed in the insect which have got clear roles in flight physiology, um, such as metabolism, and in particular lipid metabolism. So insect migrants use lipids as their primary fuel source. We've also associated genes with um, insect flight muscles and hormonal control, which is also a key aspect of migration biology. So. It's nice we've combined the two fields, you know, combining the behaviour with the genomics yeah. is the, really the strength of this project, you know, that's the strength, being able to combine this insect behaviour with um, more genetic approaches to try and get more of a handle of the mechanisms that are driving flight. Until now, until now using the radar, we've got a great idea about the patterns and, um, you know, the numbers of insects that are flying in the air, you know. Um, but we don't really have a clue about the, you know, the genetic basis that's driving migration in insect, insect pests. Yeah. The conclusions from the studies that we've done so far is that we can use this tethered flight mill system to really clearly associate genes that are expressed that have got clear roles in flight physiology. So lipid metabolism, flight muscle genes, hormonal control. And now having done so, now we've got this list of candidate genes that we can interrogate further and really try and get a handle on what's happening actually inside the insects that, that's, dri that's driving migration.